Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jack. Back going to bring you the 7.2.5 disc guide. Everything you need to know about playing disc in 725, where the spec stands, and all the information you need in quick, easy to check out format. If you want to see the full written guide, everything like that, it's going to be linked in the description below. All right, getting into it. Disc maintains that very powerful bursty effect uh, as a healer. A lot of the recent changes have given two charges to power of radiance. Uh, it has given a flat mana cost to plea, and it has reshaped all of the talents, trees as we know it, all right? But the net effect of this is that Disc continues to be a very powerful burst healer, but it also kind of changes the way that it is applying all the atonements to begin with, and it also brings up the usefulness of some atonement applicators over others, all right? So, of course, your primary atonement applicator is going to be through Powered Shield or through Powered Radiance, which, of course, like I said, is having those charges. But while it does have those charges, it is now a smart heal. So it has a two-priority system where it's prioritizing people without atonement on them, and then of the people without atonement on them, it is prioritizing the people who are most injured. All right, um, so this is going to be very, very nice for a number of different fights where there are debuffs that are going on, people that are all kind of spread out all over the room. So it would be very, very nice there, and it'll really bring up the efficiency of just all of your healing. Getting into talents, the talents you see on the screen right now for you are the default build that you'll be using for raids. Twist of Fate is competing with Castigation. Generally, you're going to be taking Twist of Fate, uh, unless, of course, you have the one of the new legendaries, which will let you take both the talents, which would be very, very nice. But generally, Twist of Fate is going to give you a uh, better uptime, going to give you better effect that you'll need in terms of just progression healing in general. So go with Twist of Fate. Uh, Feather, of course, for mobility. Shining Force, you know, you can run with any of them in the 45 tier for raids. Not going to make that big of a difference. 60 tier for the mana regen. Shield Discipline, of course, is going to remain the highest mana regen talent in the in the tree. But in terms of best HPS, you're going to run with Mindbender. Mindbender is just going to get better and better and better as we're going on uh, throughout the expansion. So if you're fine on mana, you feel comfortable with mana, you have, you know, Wisdoms or Innervates or anything like that, Definitely run with Mindbender instead. Uh, it'll just be so much stronger for your HPS. For the 75 tier, your new talent is Sanctuary. Sanctuary, of course, increases the absorb effect of your smites by 50%. It's not a gigantic healing increase, and the 75 tier in general for raids isn't that sexy or anything like that, but it is the better option of the three talents. Clarity Will, Shadow Covenant, they're pretty good in Mythic Plus. We'll talk about that in just a second, but Sanctuary is the way to go for raids. Purge the Wicked, of course, is going to be just the default must-take. Um, Divine Star and Halo, even though, though they both got mana cost reductions, they're really not good enough to beat out Purge. Like, Purge is just so strong. So, 100 tier, of course, Power Infusion got shuffled around, and it's now in the 100 tier. Um, but you will be taking Evangelism, which is the newest talent, which uh, increases the duration of your atonements by... It's now going to be 6 seconds. It's just slated for a hotfix. It might be 7 seconds for a couple more days at the time of this video, but it's going to be hotfixed to be 6 seconds. It's still going to be very powerful. Uh, you're going to be basically merging evangelism with light's wrath you're going to be using them almost always in conjunction with each other or soon after each other so um these are being very very powerful cooldown and it'll really increase the burst effect that you're going to be able to put out because you will maintain such a large amount of atonements for such a long time going into mythic plus of course on your screen right now uh there's a couple of a couple changes around with the talents but nothing too crazy twist of fate feather shining force of course are just going to be staples uh, from there, you would definitely want to take Mindbender. You know, mana is not that much of a concern in five mans because you can just sit and drink in between pulls, provided your tank is not chain pulling. Uh, 75 tier Shadow Covenant is extremely good when you're using it in conjunction with Grace. Um, and the fact that you're able to have a mobile AoE heal that you effectively could just spam if you wanted to, um, it really, really makes it very powerful. It's very good out of combat. For example, if you have like Bursting or Grievous or something like that, and you need to top somebody off like right now, then you are not really going to feel the negative effects, the negative impacts of the ability um, because the debuff will just kind of fall off before you get into the next trash pack or something like that. So if you're more interested in like the single target uh, protection of like Clarity Will, then you can definitely run that in conjunction with Grace as well. Purge again, great damage, great healing, must take. And then for the 100 tier, like I said, Grace... Uh, for higher and higher keys, or just in general, you're going to be wanting to run Grace. Power Infusion, if you're able to do, you know, if you're able to stomp through some content or something like that, and you want to have the damage increase of Power Infusion, then definitely go with that. In terms of stats, stats haven't changed overly much uh, for the spec, and the, the the big gist of it is that Haste is still going to be very valuable, it's still going to be very worthwhile, it'll be worth pursuing, but it's not going to be to the point where you just want to get Haste and nothing else, you know. It will be important to get a better diversity of stats, and mastery crit and even verse for that matter from a lot of the people i've been talking to have just gotten gotten really really close together so 
Uh, many of the people, um, some of I know, was t I was talking to the other day, he mentioned how it's going to be kind of similar to Holy Priest, where you're going to want to get a good amount of haste. You're going to want to get a healthy amount of haste, and then you're just going to want to get Mastery Crit, Mastery Crit. So, speaking of uh, other great people to talk to for theory crafting in terms of the stats, if you guys want to check out some of my buddies at Focused Will, uh, they run a Discord and they run a website as well. It does a really good job of providing a lot of information, a lot of great information for the Disc Priest. Their link is going to be below. I've shown this on my previous video, of course, but if you wanted to check out the artifact path, where Disc is going to be taking their artifact uh, path and where they're going to be putting in all their points and stuff like that once they fill out the first 35, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to get all of your traits filled out now because it will be very, very easy to get up to Artifact Knowledge 40 very, very rapidly. A lot of the hotfixes, a lot of the changes and stuff like that have made it immensely, immensely easy to get all of the artifact power that you really need, all the artifact knowledge you need. So it shouldn't take you too long. Uh, and of course, That'll be just the preferred path you want to go for. And going into playstyle. Playstyle is something that's changed quite a bit and in many ways has actually improved uh, as well. And I think Disc has gotten into a point where it's actually very, very enjoyable and it will really, really surprise a lot of people in terms of their raw performance. So getting into a couple of basic assumptions, you are going to be using your Powered Shield on cooldown. You're going to be keeping your Purge the Wicked uh, on as many targets as it's really reasonable to keep them on. If targets are going to live for you know the full duration, if they're going to live to near full duration, as long as they're not, you know, really crappy little ads that are going to get obliterated in a couple seconds, you know. You do want to be keeping your purges spread on many targets. Uh, and it'll be very, there are many, many fights in Tomb of Sargeras where you'll be able to have multiple targets dotted up at a time. It'll be very, very powerful. So keep that in mind. Pendants, of course, being used on cooldown. Keep in mind that it's definitely worth holding on to for a couple seconds if you're going to be able to have that burst. So if you just got Pendants off cooldown, but you're about to cast your second Powered Radiance Charge, then you definitely want to hold it and wait to penance afterwards, of course. Just want to make sure I get that out there. Uh, with Pyro Radiance Charges, of course, they have an 18 second recharge. And of course, keep in mind, because they are charges, only one can recharge at a time. So whenever you make, want to make sure that you're not wasting anything, you want to make sure that as long as both of them are not on cooldown at the same time, you're not wasting anything. So ideally, whenever you're having your first big ramp up, you want to be using generally both your Powered Radiance Charges uh, one after another, using your Shadow Fiend, you're using your Mindbender, then into an Evangelism, into a Light's Wrath. You always want to be having your Evangelism and Light's Wrath together and merging those two together to get, you know, basically the greatest effect because what will happen is you will have some amount of atonements that are already out before you cast your Power Radiance Charges and those will be out based off of you using Plea or Shadow Mend uh, as needed and, or, and of course using Powered Shield on cooldown. And basically, when you're done casting those two Powered Radiance Charges, you know, you do want to get, you know, your Mind Bender out pretty quick to get that full duration of all of the Atonements out, and then using your Evangelism right after to make sure that any of the first Atonements before you even began casting your Powered Radiance Charges, you want to make sure that those get that time increase, get rolled into it, as you're taking the long cast time of hitting your Light's Wrath, getting it out there, and then doing a ton of healing out of it. Of course, you do have the option in the future when uh, to be able to be using your Rapture, especially when we still have our Tier 19 4-piece. You still have that option of having those longer duration uh, atonements from your Powered Shields with Rapture, so that you can kind of mix around whether you want to be using your Rapture into maybe just one Powered Radiance Charge, and then Shadow Fiend, Evangelism, Light's Wrath, something along those lines. Um, and you kind of have that flexibility of the course of the fight, because you will have times where you will not be using both Powered Radiance Charges together. Um, and it'll kind of depend on the fight and depend on you know when your cooldowns are going off and things like that. But in terms of using your Powered Radiances, it's not always going to be like it was in the past where you're going to want to be using it before any damage happens because sometimes you do have to kind of wait and see. So for like Spellblade Allurial or for Star Augur, you're going to have these Frost debuffs uh, or even Fel, de Fel debuffs where you don't really know exactly where they're going to go and you don't know exactly who they're going to hit until they've already hit those people. So the idea there is because Powered Radiance Charges are going to prioritize people who don't have Atonement on them and who are taking damage or about to take damage or are low health, then you're having the idea of, I do want to hold on to Powered Radiance Charges until I know where the damage is going to go to, quickly cast my Powered Radiance, and then I'll be able to be healing those people from there. Again, it's not every single fight, but it's something to kind of look out for. You will definitely have many times where you'll be using your power radiances when you don't have evangelism or light's wrath so you will have a lot of like in between areas where you can be using your radiance charges when both your rapture power gradients evangelism light's wrath 
all these other things are on cooldown, then you're kind of looking at what am I doing in my in-between time? Shadow Man is extremely, extremely efficient. It can be pretty costly, but it is very, very efficient healing. It's very, very uh, high HPS healing that you're able to get out um, if you have the mana to sustain it. So, of course, if you can sustain it, if you're able to get the healing out there, definitely take advantage of it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, but, of course, keep in mind the mana cost. So it might be something where you have to decide between using lots more Shadow Man or using... Shield Discipline versus Mindbender, you know. If you are able to afford this extra mana and you can use Mindbender in conjunction with it, that's fantastic and that's a really, really high HPS, but you have to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, Plea is very high healing per mana, so that's a little bit more efficient, and generally you're going to be wanting to use that. Um, you're definitely going to be wanting to be using that on the move whenever you're going to be refreshing, uh, like, your Atonement on the tank. Keep in mind, there's not going to be a specific amount of atonements that you're going to want to have out at any one point in time, but it will vary based on the damage. So if you know big damage is about to happen, you don't have access to your Power of Radiance charges, you you already have your Power and Shield on cooldown, you already have Rapture on cooldown, you have all these other abilities on cooldown, well then you're going to be stuck with using Smite or Shadow Men to be able to get your atonements out before any of that damage happens. The last big thing to be talking about is Smite, of course, is going to be your general filler with the extra... Uh, damage that it is receiving in terms of the buffs that it's receiving, it's going to be still very, very powerful, very efficient. You just want to make sure, of course, you're having, you know, four or five atonements out at any one point in time to make sure you're getting good value out of it. You're not just smiting to heal one or two people with atonement. You know, you want to have a good amount of atonements out before you're just using general smite as filler. If you don't have those atonements out, we'll get them out and make sure that they're going on targets where it's going to be efficient. If there's no damage happening whatsoever, well, sounds like it's a good time to use Latar Potion or something along those lines. Hope you guys enjoyed my quick rundown of all things Dis Priest that you're going to be seeing in 7.2.5. I'm really looking forward to Tumas Argaris. I'm going to be streaming all my mythic progression with my Guild Vision, and then our raid times are going to be 7 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, and I will be streaming them with on my stream. It's going to be linked in the description below. All right. Hope you all enjoy it. Definitely check out the Focus Will Discord. Uh, I have a lot of buddies there, and they've done a lot of great work, and they're going to continue to do a lot of great work for Disc going forward. So definitely give them a uh, give them a look. I think Disc is going to be in an amazing position in 725, and I think it's going to surprise a ton of people who are scared. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoy it. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you all tomorrow.